Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. For those of you who maybe don't know me, my name is Sam and we're doing a Q&A, so you're about to get to know me. I was working earlier today, so excuse my appearance. I posted on Instagram this morning asking if you guys had any questions for me, and I thought let's just sit down and do a casual video. So yeah, I didn't like bother doing a full face of makeup and all that. This is just like real life. I am gonna be pouring myself a glass of wine, so if you would like to do the same, Get yourself something to drink or a little snack. Let's just hang out. A portion of this video is sponsored by Bright Cellars, so big thank you to them. If you've never heard of Bright Cellars before, they are basically a wine subscription service. So you go on their website, you answer a few questions so they can get an idea of what your preferences are, and they will match you with six wines that they think you'll really like, and they will send a new box to you every single month. If there's a particular bottle in your box that you don't love, you could just let them know and they will replace it for you with a different one and you can also skip or cancel anytime you want personally I love to have wine on hand at all times if I ever have friends over or if I just want to unwind after a long day of work you know have a glass with dinner or something like that normally when I go to the store I like to try different kinds honestly I just go based off of like what the bottle looks like <laughs> but it's always like a hit or miss so bright sellers is really cool because they have hundreds of different exclusive brands so you get to try wines that you've never tried before so I got my six bottle box a couple weeks ago and I love the way everything came packaged and they all come with these little cards which has the label of the particular wine so it's like really easy to match it with the actual bottle and it tells you a bunch of information about that particular bottle of wine so the one I'm gonna be drinking is from the brand Sprig and Rose it's their 2021 symphony wine this has peach pineapple jasmine and lemon zest it's a summery wine that's off dry and slightly sweet this just sounded really good right now just like something nice and light and that's what I like I typically I like my wine not too dry, but not super sweet either. So let's try this one out. Wine glass, by the way, is from Ikea, if you're wondering. Oh my God. Okay, I'm not even just saying this, honestly, because of the video. This is really good. I'm gonna order this one again. This is like my perfect bottle of wine oh my god there was another one that I tried which was a Chardonnay me and my friend brought this to the beach and we annihilated that bottle so fast it was so good I think the next one I'm gonna try is this Avast dry white this has grapefruit lemon nectarine and gooseberry bright sellers is offering all of my subscribers 50% off their first six bottle box so just click the link in my description to get started thank you so much bright sellers for working with me and thank you guys for supporting my sponsors it really helps support my channel and allows me to keep continuing to make this free content for you guys so I really appreciate it okay let me pull up these questions let's just start actually since I mentioned that I was working earlier today I got a lot of questions asking me how's the new job going so if you didn't see my last few videos I talked about how I was interviewing at a salon for a part-time front desk position she's also looking for me ideally if I want to in the future to kind of take over as like the salon manager. I started training last week and it's going really well. I did vlog this whole entire past week so that video should be coming next and you guys will see you know I'll, I talk more in there about what I've been doing and all of that but yeah it's been going really well thank you for asking how do you handle the hate and bullying luckily I don't really get very much hate online I would say it's like 98% positivity and only like 2% negative stuff when I go to check my comments on anything I always keep in mind that there's the possibility that I'm gonna see something that I'm not gonna like so I only will check my comments when I'm in the right headspace. If I'm feeling like super sensitive and I know if I see something mean right now, 
I'm not gonna be able to handle it, then I just won't even look. When someone says something negative about you and they're trying to attack you, that says more about them than it says about you, right? Because think about it. Me, for example, I'm pretty happy. Like obviously I, we all go through rough times, but even when I am like going through a really hard time, I could never fathom leaving hate on someone else's page. And especially like ugh, what the best is like people who make separate troll accounts. If you really feel the need to do that, it just says so much about you. Like you are lacking a lot in your life. Like you are clearly hurting or you're, you just have too much time on your hands or, you know, like there's some insecurity going on with yourself. So I just remind myself of that. Like when I see a negative comment, I'm like, it, it's more embarrassing for the person leaving the comment than it is for me. The few like hate comments that I do get are all from the same people. And I don't even bother blocking them because like you're gonna still show up every time I post something to watch and comment and engage with it. So that's just helping me more than anything. So thank you. Why are you no longer doing hair? I have talked about this a ton in previous vlogs. Funny enough, speaking of haters, I'm not gonna include their username, but the person who left this comment um, frequently trolls my Instagram and loves to make comments about how I don't work and it must be so nice to not work, I can't get a job, whatever. Um, so when I moved to North Carolina from Pennsylvania in December, I decided to stop taking clients. I was doing YouTube part-time and then working in the salon part-time. But I was making enough from just YouTube alone that I could just live off of my income from that. So when I moved down here, I figured I'll take a little bit of a break. There, I, there's no need for me to rush into finding a salon job right away. So I'm going to take advantage of that opportunity and take my time to get settled in get to learn the area, decide also if I think that I really want to live here because when you're doing hair, you have to build your clientele and that takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of work and if I'm not going to stay in this area for more than a year, why am I going to waste my time doing all of that, putting in that effort if I don't have to because I can support myself off of YouTube. So I decided to wait a little bit and also, honestly, I was just getting kind of burnt out. Like, I love doing hair, but dealing with clients, especially as a naturally introverted person, it's very draining. Even the non-problematic clients. Like, I had a lot of regulars that I loved to death. They were so wonderful and never gave me problems. But the way their personalities were, it was, like, draining to be around them and to talk to them. And I don't mean that in a negative way. If you've ever worked in the service industry, you know what I'm talking about. Like there are just some of those clients that they just take so much out of you. The last eight months, I've just been doing YouTube as my full-time job. And it's great because I get to just work from home. I get to make my own schedule, but make no mistake about it. It is still work. And it's something that I worked very hard to be able to do. And I'm not over here rolling around in like a freaking Range Rover. I live a very modest lifestyle. I never brag about my life or you know, like what I do for a living. And I've also been doing this for about 10 years and I've only been able to live off of my income from this for the last few years. So there were several years of me doing this completely for free. So the fact that I can now get rewarded from it and I can work with sponsors and I can make ad money and all of that, like yeah, I'm going to do it because I worked hard for this and I deserve it. And is doing YouTube the hardest job in the world? Of course not. It's an absolute luxury job. But I did get kind of tired of just staying home all the time. I was looking for a little more social interaction. So that's why I went and applied for the salon reception job. Still don't really think I want to take clients at the moment, but I missed the salon atmosphere. Oh, I got a few questions about breakups how to move on from a toxic ex, how do you deal with getting over an ex that just won't leave you alone, um, some questions about my ex, have we tried to get back together at all? <sighs> okay, so 
Hmm. I think if you are leaving a toxic situation, and especially if you have an ex that is not respecting your boundaries and won't leave you alone and won't just like accept that it's over, I think you just have to block them. And oh God, I know it's so much easier said than done. Like that's where I have been at lately. My ex and I like officially broke up in December when I moved down here. He stayed in Pennsylvania. There was still like that hope of, well, maybe we could work things out. So we stayed in contact and the last like few months we were like still not together technically, but we had seen each other a few times and we were still like talking like pretty much every day. And you know, like, <laughs> I mean, we were, basically acting like a couple in a long distance relationship pretty much things happened and i just realized like okay i cannot do this anymore this is not going to work out i'm at a point now where even though we had been broken up for so many months already i was still used to like him being in my life and still having that like contact and like the frequent communication so now that it's really like officially done and I'm trying to not have any more communication it's really hard because I find myself wanting to reach out and there have been times where I have I'm not even gonna lie like I am not proud to admit it but I did don't beat yourself up because that's something that I did I was being really hard on myself and I was like I know what I need to do I know I need to just block him and I need to not talk to him anymore and I need to just move on with my life it's okay like if you have moments of weakness and you are having a hard time moving on like give yourself grace and obviously you do need to create some kind of distance in order for that to happen but it doesn't need to happen right away you can slowly wean yourself off and try to just keep yourself as distracted as you can like when I start to feel sad and lonely and I get that urge to reach out I will either call one of my friends instead or my mom or I'll clean or I'll go to the gym it's it's tough. It's really tough. I feel for you if you are going through a breakup, but we're gonna all get through it and we will be good. And this time next year, we won't be sad anymore. Remember that. To go along with that, how do you know if you should let go of hope in terms of having a future with an ex-partner? That's obviously something that I have experienced recently and I don't know. I mean, everyone's situation is so different, obviously, and no one can tell you whether you should be with someone or not. But I think deep down, you know the answer. Like if you feel like you're constantly getting disappointed by this person and you feel like in order for things to work, one of you has to significantly change who you are as a person. It, it's one thing to work on the way you communicate or maybe like change certain bad habits but if you have to like completely change who you are as a person like your personality then it, it, the relationship's just not gonna work like you can't change for someone or expect someone to change for you then in that case i think it's probably just a good idea to take a step back or if you feel like yeah we have problems but we really care about each other we really love each other we really trust each other we just kind of like need help then i highly suggest trying out couples counseling and just see if you can make progress that way but that's the thing is your partner has to be willing to want to work on things as well if it's just you wanting to put in all of that work and they're not at least meeting you halfway then you know what you got to do and i know it's hard like once you have a history with someone and you know you care about someone you love someone so much but also just remember that like you deserve to be loved and you deserve to be treated with respect and you know you deserve to be in a good healthy relationship so don't feel like you're staying in something out of comfort or because you're scared to start over or you're scared 
of being alone. Just remember your worth. I got a few questions about living on my own. What's your favorite part about living on your own in North Carolina? What has been the best part of moving? What are you finding is most difficult about living alone? Honestly, like the most difficult thing about living alone is just the fact that I have a dog and especially now that I started working out of the house, it would be nice to have someone to help me out with the dog responsibilities. But honestly, other than that, I love living by myself. I love having my own space. I love not having to worry about like cleaning up after someone else's mess or someone complaining about my mess. And it's nice to just like have total privacy. And also like the sense of accomplishment. There were times where I was paycheck to paycheck and the thought of like ever living alone and not having someone to split bills with was like, it just didn't even seem like it was ever gonna be an option. So it's just really cool. Like I feel really proud of myself. How do you deal with living so far from family? I just try to visit with them as much as possible. FaceTiming as much as possible, that really helps too. I mean, that's really all you can do, I guess. It's definitely hard to be away from family and friends, but I do feel like it makes you appreciate them so much more and it makes the time that you do get to spend with them that much more special. I got a bunch of questions asking about dating. How's my dating life going? Um, it is non-existent. I was going on a few dates the first few months when I moved down here and I just quickly realized I hate online dating. Like the dating apps are just not for me. Then, you know, I was kind of like seeing my ex again. So I just like totally halted all dating. And now I'm just like I just don't even feel ready like I just feel like I still am healing from a lot of things and I definitely feel lonely at times and there are moments where I'm like oh it would be really nice to eventually meet someone and like really meet like the right person but I'm in no rush to do it and I really truly believe like everything in my life I feel like it always feels very cosmic. Like it always feels like whatever is meant to happen will happen. So I am just putting all of my faith into the universe and I'm just gonna trust that the right person will come into my life when the timing is right. Oh, that kind of like falls perfectly into this next question. Are you spiritual? If so, in what way? Love your content. Thank you. I guess so, yeah. I mean, I'm like very open to the possibility of anything. I don't subscribe to like one particular belief, but I do believe in like synchronicities and like things that are meant to be will be. And, and I don't necessarily know that I believe it. there's like a higher being necessarily or if it's just that like this is all kind of like computer coded two questions favorite show and favorite hobby right now Ooh. um okay so first thing that came to mind is this even a hobby really i don't know um if you guys used to watch Laguna Beach back in the day from MTV, Kristen and Steven have a podcast now where they go back and they rewatch every episode and they react to the episode and they talk about what stuff was actually real or what things was like curated by MTV and like what stuff was like super edited and all of that. And I just find it so interesting because I was obsessed with that show. I'll watch the episode of the show first and then listen to the podcast episode and that's been like my weekly thing so I don't know if that counts as a hobby. It's kind of a hobby and a show right? Otherwise I just recently watched The Most Hated Man on the Internet on Netflix. It's like a mini series documentary. Really really good. Highly recommend that. I got a bunch of questions just asking how am I doing? How are you feeling? How are you doing after having a rough time recently? I really appreciate that. I am doing okay. Um, like I kind of said earlier, <sighs> some days are rougher than others and I definitely still feel like lonely and I'm still healing and I, I don't know. It, it's just hard to say. Like honestly, right now that I'm doing this, I feel great. I, especially now that I'm almost a full glass of wine in. But earlier today, I was holding back tears. Some days are rough, some days are 
fine. Some days it like fluctuates throughout the day. So yeah, I don't know, but I will be fine. Time heals everything. All right, last question. How do you deal with the social pressure of not having a partner slash child? I didn't know there was social pressure. Are you saying that I should feel pressured to have a partner or a child? <laughs> Honestly, I don't feel feel the pressure every so often you know when I'm like on social media or whatever I'll see people in these great relationships and I'll see these people getting engaged and married and whatever and I'm like oh, I wish I had that actually I was just looking this morning at a girl that I went to high school with and I haven't really kept in touch with her out of high school so I really only know what I'm seeing on social media which we all know obviously it's very curated so you never know the full story but it seems like she had like the fairy tale like quintessential life experience like she went to college she got these roommates that were randomly assigned to her and then they all became best friends and they lived together all through college and they stayed best friends and all of them ended up getting married all within like the same time frame and they were all like each other's like bridesmaids and stuff and now they all do these like couples trips all the time and they're just like always doing stuff together and they seem like they just have like the perfect lives like perfect friendship perfect relationships perfect everything you know but then i remind myself that we're all on our own separate paths and as far as kids go i don't even feel like any kind of pressure to have a child at all whatsoever. I have been sitting here blabbing for so long. <laughs> thank you guys so much for all of your questions and thank you so much to Bright Sellers again for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check the link in the description. I'm gonna go heat up some dinner. That's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!